to address a very relevant topic, especially for my brothers in Christ. So, we got a big issue happening right now. Summer's coming. <sighs> so, all this heat, everyone just wants to get naked, and it's just ridiculous. And on this purity path that I've been on for the past two years with some change, uh, it has been, summer's been the most stressful time uh, during the season because you got to keep your eyes on lockdown. You can, you can relax a little bit. I've learned this past year how to relax, but keep my boundaries up. I'm going to give you guys some tips on what I do during the summer uh, to keep myself pure and away from lustful thoughts and fantasies and you know just going down that path that summer kind of triggers us to go into because there's just a lot of people who don't want to wear clothes uh, in 2021 and even in the COVID lockdown stuff it's just crazy. This video is really towards men but women can get advice from this as well and it might help them. Staying pure in the summer, let's address it. So number one, I have seek out God's word. Ooh, cliche number one, of course, right? But there actually is a lot of weight to this. We downplay God's word and its power, and there's so many questions about how dogmatic it is or how inher inerrant it is or all these different things. But the truth is, is that no matter what, whatever you put into your mind is what you're going to be thinking about. It'll help correct the thoughts, help you think about things through a different scope, through a different lens, and all that. So I put down a, the reference scripture as Psalms 119.9. How can a young man keep his way pure? And then I love how the psalmist just gives the answer. By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Or how NLT puts it. How can a young person stay pure? By obeying your word. I love how NLT says it. We're supposed to read God's word. He gives us even more depth. If you go through Psalms 119, this is the bait portion of the... Um, of Psalms 119 and it's really beautiful because it does give us the ways of how to meditate on God's Word to keep our hearts pure that's one that's the first tip that I want to give just start getting into God's Word wrestling with the hard questions when you bump into those scriptures don't eat crab don't eat shellfish don't eat bacon what wrestle with it wrestle with it that's the best thing to do Jacob wrestled with God and he got rewarded for it, okay? God doesn't want us to just, oh yeah, you know, golden child. He doesn't want that. God wants us to wrestle with his word. He wants our hearts to be changed. He wants us to submit to him. That doesn't mean like a slave owner, whoosh, submit. No, he wants us to willingly submit. That's the whole point of God creating us, to give him glory willingly. Number two, number two, number two, set boundaries. All right, I talked about that a little bit earlier. Setting boundaries is super important. I found this to be the hardest thing for me to do because you have to actually admit your own weaknesses. You have to actually know what tempts you. We're drawn away of our own lust. That's what the Bible says. We're, we're not tempted just by, you know, if you don't care about money and somebody gives you a million dollars only if you go do this sin, you're obviously going to be like, bro, I don't care. But somebody who really loves money, they're like, well, that sin's not as bad. You know, I'll, I'll go do that sin. For, for $2 million. Everybody's tempted differently. Everybody has a different uh, set, uh, uh, genetic code or uh, family of origin that makes them susceptible to different types of sin. That's why my sin is the sin that I had to deal with and that God's dealing with me on. I had I dealt with lying, I dealt with pornography. Or those are the temptations that I have to battle every day. You know, do I be honest? Do I do I do this? Do I? Oh, should I even should I even go to that department in the store? Because I know that there's going to be inappropriate things. I struggle with those things. Whereas somebody who has fought the battle of purity at a young age and didn't fill their mind with pornography as a child or whatever, or as a teenager, they might not have that same battle at the same level that I have. Setting boundaries is important. And you're like, okay, but what about, where's the scripture for that? Okay, let's get real for a second. Jesus says, so go to Matthew 18, verses 7 through 9. This is about, you know, get context, you know. So I'm not just saying, hey, boundaries are only in this verse. But, I mean, it's pretty important. So this is Jesus telling people, you know, you got to be like children to inherit the kingdom, right? But he also talks about, you know, if your eye makes you sin, pluck it out. If your right hand makes you sin, cut it off. Now, I've struggled with these verses my whole life because I had a problem with pornography. This verse would go through my head 
when I'd be doing that act. And I'd say, and especially afterward, I would say, oh, like I was tempted to rip my eyes out. I'm being dead serious, like very tempted to just do that. But I was like, but I've been told my whole life, that's not, that's not exactly what Jesus means. Obviously, uh, that's not what he means or else I would have done it because I've repented. But the thing is, is, is this, Jesus is saying, whatever drastic measure you have to do to stay away from sin is worth it. Because the consequence of, of whatever's going to happen afterward is much worse than the immediate depletion of that pleasure. It's a bad pleasure. And then there's the third and last tip that I have. This one is community. The reference verse that I have for this, I go to, so let me just, let me start out with like what I do. I go to a group every Monday and it's the best thing ever. It's an, it's an all men's group and we just talk about life and we get real and we don't have to hide things. It's a shame free zone, it's great. And if you don't have people like that in your life, you gotta get them. And I wish the church was that, was that for everybody. I wish the pastors, the leaders, the elders, every person in the church that declares themselves as a Christian was safe to share our innermost thoughts, our, our sins, our, um, our struggles and everything. The story that I wanna bring up is Nehemiah 9. This is when the, the, they got attacked, desolate. Nehemiah's coming back, he's trying to make plans, build it up, bam. So he builds up the wall and for the first time, for the first time, they read the scriptures again as a community. And the community reads the scriptures, they start crying, they're like, don't cry, you just need to celebrate. And then they do the, the festival of shelters, beautiful moment. And then they come back later, and as they, when they come back, they start confessing their sins to each other, and then they read the word for three hours. But I mean, that's pretty much it, guys. I just gave three tips, so let's just do a recap real quick. So the first one was seek God's word. Seeking God's word is is just going to put those right thoughts in our minds. As a man thinketh, so he is. So if you're putting God's word in your mind, you're thinking about God's word all the time, you're quoting scriptures, memorizing scriptures, trying to apply the stories of Jacob and Abraham and the what not to do stories, and then there's a little bit of what to do. Uh, it's, not a, it's not your 100% moral compass, but it is a narrative that you're supposed to apply to your narrative, the story that God's given you and making out of you. So number two, Set boundaries, set up things, take away the smartphone, get rid of the computer, whatever your triggers are, get those things out, get toxic people out, get these conversations that are unhealthy out, turn off the video, if YouTube is bad for you, delete the app, whatever you gotta do. Number three is community. Get that community, get people around you so that you have structure and you have accountability in your life. You have friends that know you from the inside out, not just a couple people. Get get more and more and more. The more you can accumulate, the better the community will be and the richer your life will be. How does all this apply to summer, Isaac? What are you talking about? Boundaries, community. I thought you were just gonna tell me like wear sunglasses that blind you and then you just walk around like this and and then you don't you don't see nothing and and you're good no that's not that's not the kind of advice i'm giving I'm trying to give you some heart advice get your heart right fix the thoughts in your mind fix the heart and your emotions connect with yourself get people connected to you connect with god connect with god self and others those three things if you get those in your life and you start connecting with god Start connecting with yourself, understand your emotions, why you're feeling the way you're feeling, why you're doing what you're doing, why you're triggered when you're triggered. And you start putting all those three together, mixing your life up like that. I'm telling you, this is a remedy, not just for success, but this is a remedy for health. And so I wanted to share this with you guys. Hope this video was helpful. Please subscribe, hit the like button if you liked the video. This is my first one. I'm coming back after a long time. Thanks for watching.